This is Paula Gloria, and this show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole. So this will be Friday, and this is a conclusion of the week that we've had with Bhagavan Das and also with me and Molly setting up for the, for the interview. And so today I want to kind of gather it all together and uh, ask this question, and that is the question, can, um, can religious practice decondition us, or indeed does it recondition us? And the importance of this is so that we are more aware of what's going on around us. Now, those of you that watch public access television like to watch it because, uh, because we feel that we have access to knowledge that vested interests would prefer us not to have access to. But there's one thing, uh, one thing is having the knowledge presented, and the other thing is being able to digest it in a meaningful way so that we can create a better life. Because everyone has a beautiful reason for going about what they're doing. It's just that sometimes the connections of empathy aren't there. And so what one person considers some, some uh, beautiful outcome may not be what another person considers a beautiful outcome. Now, if you are an adherent to the zero-sum game, then the belief is that more on one side is less on another side. And although it's true you need a balance of positive and negative to, make a, a, to create a creation, the idea of new realities is to go beyond a zero-sum game. And that's what always excites me when I hear of people, of thinkers, who, who are delving into this realm where you're not looking on things in, uh, in a normal way or in a way that our usual corporate media would like us to look because they're protecting a certain paradigm. But that if the connections of empathy are made, that we can actually go into more successful paradigms for all people concerned. I explained in my own personal life how um, money wasn't everything. After I turned 30,000 into 5 million in the cellular lottery, and then I got active in charity work, I found that uh, sometimes people weren't behaving with me in uh, such a robust way. You know, there would be sort of that feeling, oh, if I say this that Paula likes, then she's going to give me the grant that I'm asking for. And so for that reason, I can empathize with those who are trying to create a better world but are not getting that, that robust connection from other people and therefore are, are timid to be able to share their power and their resources. So um, again, the idea of creating new realities is that if we can recognize that all human beings have the same needs, we just have different strategies to go about meeting those needs, then we can see that actually sharing strategies might be something more exciting than to sort of willfully go, go ahead in, in a certain direction. Like, say, you have, you're born into a position of, of power and connections, and so you want to parlay that into having more power and, and more connections. But then you have to look at the fact, well, are those connections forged in fear? You know, are certain politicians being blackmailed? We've, we've had shows where we've looked in the whole area of pedophilia, how there's, how there's a pedophile ring operating out of Omaha, Nebraska, and how that ring is, is, is affecting a, a cartel that's going on in Congress. So my idea of going farther down the rabbit hole is to try to study what is conditioning. Why are we conditioned to see certain things and to be absolutely blind about other things and to fight uh, with bloody tooth and nail to protect a misperception. Why are we not relaxing or trusting in order to understand if a new par paradigm comes in that uh, we can embrace it because the old paradigm, maybe it was comfortable, but it didn't really serve us. So the idea of, um, of conditioning, religious conditioning, is that it can decondition us, or it can recondition us, or we can start off having been conditioned with it. But uh, again, for those of you who've watched my shows, you realize I have a huge respect for all of the religious traditions. 
and that what I am encouraging is studying them more and understanding how, how we came into the bodies that we came into, the religions that we came into, the culture that we came into, so that we can decondition them. This again, for those of you who are just tuning in today and didn't see uh, Wednesday and Thursday, this is Bhagavan Das. He was the one who at 28 years old left, no, no, at 18 years old, left America when John F. Kennedy was shot. And I was very excited by what he said. And what I want to do is then juxtapose this to something that I gathered at Union Square from one of the people I met. As you know, I'm there every Wednesday. So let's carry on, and I'll show you what excited me about what Bhagavan Das, uh, what he said at the beginning of the interview that was shown on Wednesday. Remarkable people. Today's guest is Bhagavan Das, and he has led an incredible life. And, um, and my friend Paula Gloria is also here to, because she spent a lot of time yeah. in India as well. So um, I, I kind of don't know where to start. I mean, you've done so much. And um, here's, well, Paula likes to find books early. So th this is you. Now, this is my friend Molly Cheshire, and she was interested in interviewing Bhagavan Das because she's writing a book herself about our experiences in India, particularly with the Miracle Masters. But more than that, um, she's also, she also really admired the actual writing that Bhagavan Das did in this book. It's already 10 years old, but it's really, really very, very well written. So I would highly recommend you to go out and get this book with, uh, by Bhagavan Das. And uh, I, again, remember, he's the one that introduced Ram Das to his guru. And Ram Das was uh, Herbert Al Her Richard Albert. He was a professor at Harvard. So let's carry on. Book um, that is all about your spiritual adventures in India. So I'm, I'm curious, what took you to India, and, and when did you sort of make the leap? Get ready. This is the part I love. Into the spiritual path. What took me to India was uh, the bullet that went through JFK's skull. Wow. And the velocity of that bullet threw me across the Pacific Ocean on my spiritual quest. Because I knew that that was a conspiracy. And that I knew America was bullshit. And that it was dark, it was, uh, Vietnam was a total bullshit trip and that everything was down. And that I was getting out as quick as I could. And I was going for the inner world, and the outer world made no sense, and it was a total illusion. And so I got it right then and there. I was 18 years old. Yeah, I left two weeks after Kennedy was shot. Wow. Wow. So there you go. That's pretty intense. Another strategy of, um, of living life. And remember, Jay-Z Knight, before she started channeling Ramtha, he taught her that God is in everyone. So we all have different strategies to meet our needs. There's the statue of Mahatma Gandhi. A lot of times I set up my little nonviolent communication center booth around there. So I, I want you to listen to what another person has to say. Uh, I'm interested in 9-11 truth, but um, this fellow just that day happened to spontaneously bring up the JFK assassination. and. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting, so I, I took his thoughts. He'll be coming up here pretty soon. Okay. Hi. Okay, you're rolling. So you were just passing through yeah, just because you're doing through. errands here. I was doing errands, and you know, I, I, yeah, I saw a. And then you uh, saw me, and then you realized that you'd right, seen I me on TV. You're recording. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, um, I just want people to have an orientation right. of where I am. Um, as I said, if you don't mind, just keep no, talking. I'm that's okay. You. I saw the National Geographic special. Their conclusion was, it's possible that um, you know the World Trade Center collapsed because of. Design flaws, structural flaws, and that really depends on if you believe uh, the uh, experts who are on TV or not. But um, you know, I lived through the Kennedy era. I remember the day that Kennedy was shot, and you know, with every conspiracy, it's very difficult to prove it or disprove it. And I think that uh, a lot of the conspiracy theories with Kennedy were driven, you know, behind. Um, 
we don't, you know, people have their own agenda, and everybody brings that to the table, whoever they are. Were and you, when Kennedy was shot, were you upset? I was, I was shocked. I was confused. You, do you remember where you were? Yeah, I was in school at the time. Me and, too. And I one, was. One of my classmates came in and said, "Oh, Kennedy's. They shot Kennedy with a machine gun." So you know. Really. There you go. That was the news report. Then we heard. So right away, there's misinformation, right? right? Well, look, the best book that I've uh, seen on the subject is called Best Evidence, mm -hmm. and that is like it deals with the Kennedy autopsy and the photographs. Did and you see the Zabota film? I've seen them all. I've, I've seen. But all. how much? How much? You can see. I never put any energy into this, and when I was in college, yeah. believe it or not, not being interested in politics, because right. my show is about spirituality and right. reflects my interest right. for many, many, many years. Well, but I had a guy staying in yeah. my place at Santa Cruz because I was going to UC Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. who was a fanatic on this in 1972. Right. And I thought just by how he looked. Now, when I look back on it, probably yeah. he was taking cocaine. Yeah. So he had that kind of, you know, hyper vibe. Well, and I don't yeah. care what he was saying. Yeah. I was turned off to him. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I, so yeah. I decided because yeah. he seemed yeah. like a weirdo. Right. But le recently, somebody who is very methodical and careful, right. she showed me. Uh, she had done a lot of reading on it. Right. And, uh, and I had to just very recently. Mm -hmm. Right. Take another look. Well, look. You know, for me. Yeah. Look, uh, look, it was so many years ago. Look, Kennedy did not commit suicide. It was obvious that uh, he was shot. Everyone acknowledges that he was shot, and somebody did it. And uh, that's basically it. You know, I mean. But um, I you, you don't think a proper investigation is important? Not people that have self-interest and might be the uh, very culprits. Maybe there's one about the JFK assassination. Yeah, I mean, or, or just in general. In general, don't, don't you know. think the media shouldn't jump on right away and say who did it and plant ideas in our head? Well, certainly. Until we go yeah. through like a court. You see, to me, I want to say here, uh, religion, or say with. Well, here, let me show myself here because this is important to me. The idea of a covenant with God is that you have something you can bank on. You have a deal that's being made. You have uh, just like something earnest. You're bringing some energy into the deal, and you want to say, can I trust that this will happen? And any time that is done, a, a sort of a relationship between two parties, you're talking about things that involve power, more and less power. And this is the path of Shakti. Now, the idea of nonviolent communication, why I'm so excited about it, is when you can create connections of empathy, even if you're one that's in the lesser, in the position of lesser power, once you can indicate that your needs are the same as the needs of the one who has more power, wouldn't the one who has more power want you to be doing whatever that powerful one wants you to do? not because of fear of, of punishment or desire for re reward, but you see the beautiful reason why that one in the position of power wants that. And once that beautiful reason is understood, the connection of empathy is made, and then punishment and reward just sort of goes by the wayside. So what I was trying to point out here in, in my conversation with this gentleman that came up to talk to me when I was at Union Square, was um, isn't it important to have courtrooms and uh, and 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 places of of respect, quiet, um, quiet uh, environments, just just like you go to a synagogue or to a church, because you want that that peace and that vibration of reverence to sort of send your awareness to to higher realms. So in the same way. I mean, I mean, at one time, the study of religion, law, and philosophy was one study. So when we compartmentalize things, we think that they're, they're different areas, but they're not. So I'm always saying, just a proper investigation, where in a non-emotional way, you look at exhibit A, exhibit B, and so on. So I just wanted to pause to uh, elaborate on that and no emotions and be quiet and well, look, exhibit A yeah. and you're right, you're judges right. in nice you're right. robes. Well, look, we, look, we had the Warren Commission and then they did another uh, report. I think Gerald Ford was on that commission. Uh -huh. So as you know, as far as the current conference is concerned and as far as American people are concerned, it's, um, it's a dead issue. 
But as far as far as that relating to that's issue, that's uh, a good metaphor. Well, look, but as far as relating to 9/11, uh, I think that. Um, uh, you, uh, believe it or not, I think it's really too early to figure out if there was a conspiracy or not. It's too early. I think so, but this, you know. How long does it take? Because you said Kennedy's dead, or the issue's know. dead. I, I don't know. I don't, There's I, a fine I line, don't know. right? But I think that I think that you know the people who say that uh, it was a, a conspiracy, regardless of the evidence, they should accept the fact that uh, they could be wrong. Sure. And sure. you know. Sure. The thing. They could be wrong, it's true, but how frustrating when there's no proper investigation. You you push people into a position where they start to look like, um, like it says here on my jacket, lunatic fringe. And so Noam Chomsky so excellent in showing how language affects, um, you know, the emotions of, of what topic you're approaching. And that's why it's so sad that he himself, who's a master of understanding language, doesn't approach this this area of 9/11 truth. What the conspiracy is is that, um, or um, it is that it's, it's very difficult to prove. Look, it's like anything scientific. It's you know, it's like trying to prove the, the, the afterlife. <laughs> it's very difficult to prove or disprove. After all said and done, right, right. You, you know, uh, you either try to prove it, been trying, trying to prove it, you should been trying, trying to disprove it, and you have to accept when you get the... I don't quite think this is like the afterlife, but I, I wanted him to, to feel supported by me, and, and I really appreciated that he would come and he would talk, so, um, you know, I wasn't saying anything right away. The evidence that satisfied you, whether it, it you know, uh, uh, you believe it or not, that it's true. So, I, I was, I was, I happened to be out of uh, New York uh, on 9/11, but keep in mind also, uh, by this time you've seen the Webster Tarpley show that I had on, um, that I showed on Christmas Day, and uh, Webster Tarpley said the schizophrenic um, behavior of George Bush, that a lot of um, you know, people who are competent to, to pick this up, doctors, psychiatrists, whatever, that, that type of schizophrenic leadership has now revealed itself throughout our society. And I think that's why it's very important that we behave in a compassionate way towards each other, all of us, and, uh, and also to ourselves when we see that we uh, lapse into irrational behavior. Uh, my particular feeling is. I was that, in an ashram in India. Oh really? Yeah. Well, that's that's that was probably the proper place to be. That's not where I went. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, look. Well, you know, I really yeah. appreciate you coming down here, sure. and and I do want to keep everything open. I yeah. want to work with a man yeah. named Michael Elner who works with Heal Health Education AIDS Liaison, yeah. and he also feels in studying the literature that the idea of a conspiracy theory or a conspiracy sure. may be very counterproductive to people's health and clarity of mind. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to explore it more with him because he actually yeah. has helped people yeah. who've yeah. been given death sentences just turn it around. Right. Well, of course, I mean, there, so are I, of, there are a lot of hustling health issues regarding 9-11 and those... No, no, are, I mean, you know, I was meaning on AIDS because, oh, you know, AIDS. He, well, he's, yeah. he's of the school of thought as I've been yeah. convinced after reading yeah. it, their HIV you can't find a certificate of purified sample. Yeah. There's well, no evidence that HIV um, there is causes a guy, AIDS. There is a guy who did a, um, a book about that, you know, uh, that AIDS was engineered starting many years ago. He could be right. Yeah. I mean, certainly. No, but they don't even yeah. believe engineered. But, but the yeah. point, what I'm really excited about yeah. is that you came down, you go on camera, sure. you're speaking, because sure. I feel whatever our opinions are, the best way, because we do have terror, whoever yes. the terrorists ultimately are, we are living in a in yeah. a rain in, in a time when that's very much yeah. around. I ha I've had brilliant people come up and talk to me, mm -hmm. and they won't be on camera. Right. And I feel the best thing to do to fight terrorism is to not be terrified and to share and to talk and that's to keep true. open to each that's other true. and share. Oh sure, sure. Opinions. Uh, I mean, look, even if it wasn't a 9/11. There are other uh, acts of terror around the world committed by various people, and uh, I figure something like this would have happened sooner or later because 
We, the people of this country, let our government from day one make the wrong friends and the wrong enemies. Well, you know, actually, I mean, that, that includes like George Washington actually, and stuff like that, you know? Right? No, actually, that's exactly what he's saying, what you're saying. Something could have sure. happened. No, it's, it's so a, it's like, we don't have to live in a skip. Yeah, we don't have to live in a schizophrenic world. In other words, um, there there are events that lead up to other events. We don't have to look for some huge external evil. Yeah, world sure. that, We're responsible. that things are related to things. If yeah, you, of course. It, there's, there is a causation. Well, look, I mean, it started, if you want to go back to uh, talk about Iran, there was the Jimmy Carter and, um, you know, the hostage situation in Iran and the Shah of Iran. So, oh, that, that's in this book. Yeah, I mean, you know, so you make enemies in that part of the world a long time. Yeah, but know? if we have misinformation, we don't get... Check out in this one, um, that's actually from a painting by a man named Hartfield, who painted in Germany in the 1930s. And what he's showing is that Fritz Tyson, who was the big industrialist, is manipulating Adolf Hitler like a puppet. And uh, this book in 1992 started to come out, uh, and there's a lot more people coming out, talking about the relationship to Avril Harriman and, uh, and Fritz Tyson and how George Bush's father, this is the senior guy, Prescott Bush was actually a tire salesman when he married the daughter of um, somebody working with Avril Harriman. So, uh, so that's that's pretty interesting too. Peace of mind that Look, we're I'll looking tell you something. for. I so think a lot of it is out there studying. in the public. I was trying to get the guy to study a little more. For us, is, is that in the open? But you know, when you're kind of scared, it's hard to study. Again, that's the importance of deconditioning yourself. Not that it's an end in itself to have a peaceful, clear mind, but then you can uh, pick up data better. Like you know, um, the the fact that a analyze it, not just pick it up. There's uh, oil and that sort of stuff, and uh, these people, the Bushes, and a lot of other people were involved with oil. So, uh, oh yeah. Look, if we could get our oil from Mexico, Mexico would be the richest country in the world, and we wouldn't have terror because we'd get out of the Middle East, and that would be the end of it. Or we would do what? We often look for simple answers. Um, Brazil has done uh, ethanol alcohol, you know. Right, right. Or, or now they're talking about getting... I, one of my business partners that got me into cellular telephone and I made five million dollars at it. Wow. Uh, people thought he was kind of eccentric and crazy. Just, right. And he was he was talking about getting diesel engines and running them on vegetable oil. Right. Well, we I just recently completed a cross country trip with him. My first cross country trip. Right. And uh, you know. It's not re it's not unreasonable yeah. anymore. If you look at the price of diesel and the price of vegetable oil, oh, sure. and you can grow vegetables all over the place. Oh, sure. the farm this is a picture of Neem Kirli Baba, and this was the guru of uh, Bhagavan, da Bhagavan Das. And this was the man that uh, he introduced to the Harvard professor, Richard Alpert, who uh, was known to the world as Ram Das, and he wrote the famous book, Be Here Now. Now this man, Neem Kirli Baba, was a great Siddha. He was a man of the miracles. And, or, you know, in a way we could say, one that was fully deconditioned. He embraced his culture, but he also saw a huge potential in, uh, in others that were coming from America, which if he was narrow-minded and he just um, stayed with, with, with his tradition, well, someone like, um, Bhagavan Das, this 18 or 19 year old coming from America, would be regarded as an outcast. So, you know, regular Hindus would, would frown upon what he did, but look at how his power um, affected the world. Okay, now I'm going to ask uh, Bhagavan Das uh, about 9 11, because he's talking about how you create reality or how if you want to know what you want look around you because that's what you want what you want is what you've created so uh, let's carry on with this I want to know what you want look at what you got because that's what you want that's <laughs> what you so want and so when you, you got two weeks <clears throat> after Kennedy was shot that's uh -huh. what you wanted yeah I wanted to get out of town I wanted to get out of America I never liked America uh -huh. I thought something was wrong with it do you still think things, it's, something's wrong with America? Well, I, I just don't like America that much. I mean, the consciousness of, you know, the materialism of America. What do you I say? Mean, it's, 
Huh? Where do you spend most of your time? New York City in Los Angeles. Yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh. I mean, I, at the end of the book, it says you lived in Harvard. I thought you lived in Harvard. I lived in Harvard for five years. But that's a realm of consciousness. Yeah. And so if I'm in Harbin, then... Then I'm interested in um, how somebody who's done all of these austerities uh, responds to what happened on 9-11. For those of you who saw, saw this on Wednesday, it's a repeat. So here we go. She was cutting down America with uh, John F. Kennedy. Oh, time. totally. She cut off John F. Kennedy's head and she took down the towers to wake people up. Yeah, we were going to talk about that because oh you were the, you were in New York when the towers came. Yeah, down. I was there watching the whole thing happen. And what what was your experience? I mean, Hollywood I, movie set. That's what it seemed like to me when I was watching. Yeah, it. it was a Hollywood movie set. It was a total, 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 you know, production. It was a total show. It was not real at all. What What do you think? So what I'm saying is, uh, go beyond what this guy looks like and what he's doing with his prayer uh, wheel. And uh, listen to what he's saying. I, I find it, I find the clarity fascinating. I'm real about it. The whole thing. <laughs> the, way the, movie, the way the buildings were imploded, the way it was a demolition job, oh, so the way they both dropped and the explosions did, and everything, everything did, about did, it. Did you see that straight away? Absolutely. You saw that straight away. Well, well, I was watching it. I saw it happen. I, I was in uh, oh. Swami Kaleshwar's ashram in, in near Bangalore when uh -huh. it happened, and someone mm -hmm. told me, and being that I never was interested in politics, I didn't put much attention on it for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then DVD appeared in my mailbox, and then I saw the scenes that were kept from the public, uh -huh. and then it was so obvious that it was a controlled demolition. Yeah, it was a demolition job. I so, saw it. Watched it happen. So you watched with your own eyes? Yeah, with my own eyes. Yeah, so exactly. you didn't see it on TV? No, I watched it with my own eyes. Wow. I was there. I felt the thunder, the whole roof shook, you know, the, 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 the earth shook right. from the explosion. It had nothing to do with the airplane. Right. Oh, my gosh. Oh my God. Now, after you saw that, being that you are a person who uh -huh. wants to share the blessings of the divine love. Uh, so I start to ask him what he what he did once he saw what he saw, and uh, he'll talk about the the spiritual work that he does with it. But um, it's a type of miracle, ladies and gentlemen. It's a horrific miracle, but for those who have witnessed miracles, it's something very terrifying to the nervous system because it goes out of the boundaries of of social consensus. What did you feel to share with people? Just to be quiet and let them go through Well, what's there to share? I mean, at, at this point, it's not like, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm no, no, uh, no, excuse me. I mean, in that moment. Well, in that moment. Because you've had all these austerities. I you've you've practiced to raise your consciousness mm -hmm. to see more clearly, mm -hmm. to see beyond the illusion. Your colleagues, people, other human beings that were standing next mm -hmm. to you at that time, mm -hmm. were they seeing what you saw? No. But they were just going right away to the TV and the Yeah, program. they were running to the TV and they were totally hooked into the to propaganda be, machine. So they wanted to be told what happened. Yeah, they wanted to be told what happened. And I was like dealing with the astral plane because I, I was helping thousands of people who just lost their bodies move right. through the astral plane. So oh. I was doing like major like, you know, I was directing souls. So I was doing traffic direction.